Welcome, welcome, folks. We're, uh, well, I know I'm excited about it. We've got a brand new video series that we've been working on now for a while. Finally getting it all come to all come together for us. It's called Campfire Tales and Mostly True Hunting and Fishing Stories. Captain Buster is, uh, has been the center of attention on all this stuff here lately, especially the first part of this series. And he wanted me to let you guys know that he's got a lot more of the teachable moments coming, working on them now. We're trying to get them set up in the queue, and as soon as we do, we're going to start getting them posted for you guys. You've been asking for them. We're going to deliver them to you. Okay, this new series is going to really be awesome. It goes back when uh, Captain Buster was in high school. That was between 57 and 61. 1957 and 1961 were the years that Captain Buster spent at Camden High School. I followed in his footsteps, but it was uh, late 70s and early 80s whenever I crossed through there. But there was an exceptional man that worked in within the athletic department over there and at Camden High School. His name was Coach Hutch Hutchinson. I know you've heard us talk about him a lot. He was a product of his time. He was a great man. He was a World War II Navy vet. Uh, he, uh, he was born in Spartanburg, South Carolina, and he was going to Newberry College, and his education got interrupted after Pearl Harbor was hit in 1941, and he went and did a couple of tours over in the Pacific, where he was stationed all over the Pacific. Got back home around 1946, and in 1948, by 1948, he was coaching over at Sumter High School, the Sumter High School Gamecocks, and in 1948, they won a state championship in basketball. And all this was, uh, was preceding before he got over here, moved on up the road here to Camden to get into Captain Buster's world, where there at Camden High School at that time, there was a sportsman's club that uh, all of the athletes, these young men would get involved with, and Coach Hutch ran this thing, and Captain Buster has got some hilarious stories with that wonderful, wonderful man that we knew as Coach Hutch. Me and my wife both at the time we went through high school, he was still subbing whenever we went through high school, but I was, I'd already been, uh, I had grown up hunting with the man uh, because he had, after he retired, he continued to hunt with Bone Hammond and Captain Buster and, and the Davenports and all these guys you still see us hooked in with. We have been lifelong friends. We've known each other forever. All. All of the sons, the Captain Buster sons and the Davenport sons, we all grew up together playing ball together. Love each other a lot. We, uh, we spent a lot of time with each other growing up. And so it's been several generations that this man has had a very positive effect on. All right, let's get into it. Okay, let's roll the clock back. It's 1957 to 1961. Captain Buster is in high school, and Detroit is putting out some awesome iron like the 1957 Bel Air. Of course, the 57 Corvette, and we can't forget the 1957 Ford T-Bird. The Billboard Top 100 was topped by artists like Elvis Presley, Ray Charles, and we can't forget about little Brenda Lee and, well, Chubby Checker and the Drifters. So now that the time is set, let's get into the stories. Huh. <laughs> you ready? I'm ready. Yeah, well, back when I was growing up, one of my favorite stories that you always told was about Coach Hutch on one of the sportsman outings with the uh, machete and the rat. That's all I can <laughs> say about that. So I was going to get the lowdown on what happened there. All right. In the sportsman club, Coach Hutch would take us um, hunting to a big club he was in. They had a big old wall. Um, a building down there, I reckon you call it, what, what do you call it? Uh, uh, oh, a rec big recreation rec area yeah, yeah, uh, and all that. Where was this at? This was down in the swamp, down below Poinsett State oh, Park. Oh, okay, down okay. In the swamp. Over there towards Antioch? I don't know where Antioch is. <laughs> Let's was, see. Yeah, the uh, it's Poinsett is over there towards, was that the one over there towards Sumter? That's the one that we go by on going down 260. Yeah, right? okay. Yeah, I was yeah, thinking uh, about I was thinking about Goodall over yeah, there, but no, yeah, that no, point no. sets down in your Sumter. Right. And uh, Coach Hutch, he used he used his machete for everything. <laughs> and uh, 
we were, you know, uh, Charles Smith, we called him Smitty. He was down there with us that time. Must have been a dozen of us. And uh, we'd go out and hunt all day, and then we'd come in at night and, and eat, and, uh, and then we'd spend the night, and then the next day we'd go hunt again, and then we'd go home that evening. And uh, so we were down there, and Smitty never shuts up. He never shuts up. He talked and talked and talked. And Coach Hutch every now and then would say, Hot Jazz Smitty said, Why don't you shut up? And Smitty would just keep right on talking, you know. And uh, so we'd been hunting all day, and, and uh, that night uh, we went to bed, and it was full moon. I'll never forget it. And there was a big wonder down there, and, I, and you could. You could see it glowing outside that window. And everything, the coach said, hot day, everybody, y'all be quiet now and go to sleep. We're going to hunt hard tomorrow. We said, yes, sir. And we hadn't been there very long. And all of a sudden, Smitty goes, coach, coach. And coach Hutt said, hot day, what do you want, Smitty? And Smitty says, rat, rat. And I look and silhouetted against that window, one of them big old wolf rats about that day long. And uh, all of a sudden, I seen Coach Hutch figure coming in. He had he was left handed. He had that old big machete up. He come easing up there, and no rat was sitting there looking around. All of a sudden, he goes whack and chop that rat. <laughs> he says, "Hot dad, that took care." Of. He said, "Now shut up, Smitty, and go to sleep." So he did, and we slept that night. And next morning, we got up, and Bill Shiver was supposed to bring the bacon. <laughs> well. Instead of getting the sliced bacon, Shive had just got a, a, a whole slab of bacon mm -hmm. unsliced. And he says, Coach Hutch says, hot dash, Shive, why didn't you get it sliced? He said, well, I thought you'd want it like this. He said, that's all right. Reached over there and got the same machete oh, that gosh. he had wiped that rat <laughs> half into. And everybody was scared to say anything. Oh, Smitty done like that there several times to say something. Coach Hutch just slicing that bacon, you know. And we fried it up and didn't nobody die. I, I, I didn't figure nobody was going to complain about it. <laughs> yeah, we oh. ate and enjoyed it. And the next day, the next day with that machete I'm talking about, we all in a line going down into the swamp. I think that we were dog hunting that day. And Coach Hutch was in front of the line with his machete and he was chopping limbs, you know, as he was going. I can't remember that boy's name that was right behind him. But Coach Hutch always carried oranges. Oh, and yeah. apples I remember and that. We do the same thing. Oh, yeah. He'd have, always, those, he'd have stuff all over him. That old game pouch would be, be full. full. Mm -hmm. And uh, that boy was right behind him, cut the limbs too, and he goes, and went across and cut the back of his oh, game man. pouch. And them oranges and apples and bananas <laughs> started falling out. And we didn't say a word, boy. Everybody <laughs> must have been a dozen of them. And we all. <laughs> Him getting lighter and lighter, we all about to just be eating apples and all. And all of a sudden, Coach Hutch noticed it. He turned around, he said, Holla, dead bone mine. He looked in the whole crowd and just eating his Everybody's groceries. eating his <laughs> Oh, my say, I miss Coach Hutch a lot. I agree, I'm agree. glad we got, that we got to hunt with him a few times anyway before we lost him. Yeah, he was. Good man.